Hey guys, welcome back to the video. In this video, you guys, my season review for Miss Marvel. This video will be containing all things spoilers. So if you haven't already seen Miss Marvel, make sure to like this video and come back to it later. There'll also be timestamps linked in the description down below if you want to skip to a certain part of this video. Before we get into videos and in here, make sure to subscribe and subscribe so you don't miss any time of new video or go live. But don't waste any more time. Let's get into it. So I want to start off this video by talking about my ranking for all six of the episodes because I think Miss Marvel is unique in terms of breaking the MCU formula of the sixth episode, the finale, ruining the entire show but of course we had to go from worst to best so the worst episode of this entire show in my opinion is episode two where she's kind of just learning more of her powers obviously at the end of episode one she gets her powers for the first time i like episode two still i think it has the best family dynamic where she's still trying to figure out what she wants to do how to actually navigate her powers and how everything really works and i really like the episode i just definitely think it's the weakest out of all of them we don't really have anything set up in terms of a story we don't really know where we're going with the story until episode three which kind of makes episode two a weird middle ground especially since episode one in my opinion is a great introduction i'll talk about that later and i think episode three does a great job of setting up our story so again episode two is just caught kind of in a weird spot in my opinion but next up is episode five now i do think episode five has super great individual moments it has super great individual pieces i know this might be a hot take but i do think that the fact that this is a major flashback episode it really does hinder the show overall i think i that's where my biggest problem comes in is that it kind of falls in the trap of okay let's give our big backstory chunk in episode five whereas i think they should have done it in episode three or four to kind of keep us still engaged in the story i think episode five is still great i still think it's a really damn good episode i also love aisha's story i love how they talk about the partition the experience of the people in the partition it's a great backstory and it culminates everything very very well sets up the finale perfectly but it also does basically get rid of our main villainous that which is comrades mom i keep forgetting her name but they do take out that villainous threat at the end of episode five which leaves obviously the dod in episode six again this is all great i love this storytelling i just feel like it being a backstory definitely hinders the overall story but moving on next up is episode one this is just a perfect introduction overall in my opinion and it's probably the most creative episode out of all of them i think that episode one and two were by far the most creative episodes or maybe it just felt like that because this is just a brand new show but i definitely feel feel like episodes one and two they really elevate i guess the creative aspects of the show but also episodes four and three they also do a great job with that but i don't want to talk about episode one for too much longer just because it is just really a good introduction i think it sets up our world well this little city of new jersey and i think it it sets up our community well in this show and i think it does a good job of letting us know all of our characters letting us actually be interested in everything they actually set up a good basis for kamala khan they set up a good basis for her foundation her family her friends everyone around her and i think they do a really really great job of just making us invested in the character very very fast but next episode in third place is episode four this is the action-packed episode with the big chase sequence at the very end we get introduced to the red daggers kamala uses their powers stuff like that it's all just it's it's a great episode in my opinion it has the best action of the season i definitely think that episode six the finale has some phenomenal action but in terms of just hand-to-hand -hand combat versus utility and every all different types of action i think episode four does it the best i think episode four is kind of just below the other two because of the fact that it doesn't have as much emotional hold in it now in second place is episode three this is the wedding episode this episode is just absolutely insane i really do love it i probably smiled the most during this one just the music the vibes the story the storytelling and just how everything came together during the wedding and how everything culminates together we have the little action scene sequence at the very end nakia finding out that kamala is the light girl and everything just comes together so well in this episode i think episode three would have been the peak of this show if the finale wasn't as good so now let's just talk about that the finale it really just outdid the entire show in my opinion i have a big problem with the show overall which is that tonally it's very very weird it doesn't know what it wants to be the writing is more of a kid's show but at times the maturity is something of like all the other marvel disney Plus shows. and i'll talk about that when i talk about season one as a whole but i do think that the tones really mess with episode six for me episode three and episode six are basically tied the only reason i think episode six is 
as good as it is or a little bit more higher than episode three is because during the entire episode I was pretty much engaged but I will say the weird tones and maybe when I go back to rewatch I won't like it as much which I'm betting on because the tones really just clash again it's this emotional story of Kamala finally being able to like take in all of her powers and kind of actually be a superhero for once like the big like end of the day saving everyone type of thing but at the same time it does feel like a Disney plus original Disney Channel original show halfway through the episode when they're setting up to fight the DoD with the softballs and writing on the chalkboard and the, the all of the lines and everything in this episode it really feels the corniest it's ever been through this entire show which again I don't really mind it but I definitely on a rewatch I'll probably be a little bit more bored which does mean that I think episode three might end up being over episode six but for now I will say the finale did deliver and that's where I want to get into the season one review as a whole because this show broke the MCU formula in my opinion now that doesn't mean I still have high hopes for shows like She-Hulk I am Groot but this show did prove to me that deviating away from the MCU show formula on Disney plus does work this is six episodes like all the other shows before except for WandaVision but not even all these episodes were as long as they could possibly be yet they still really did deliver story-wise has been my biggest issue for all of the Marvel Disney plus TV shows it definitely feels like yes they rush towards the end the finale never is a good payoff and that was even the case with the last one Moon Knight I definitely feel like the finale was the most underwhelming part of the entire show but Miss Marvel doesn't really shy away from anything in the finale in my opinion that's what really separates it that's why I just love this damn show because it maybe it's because our expectations have been so low but if you guys didn't know my top three Marvel Disney Plus TV shows before Miss Marvel was in third place Moon Knight second place WandaVision and first place Loki I do think that Miss Marvel has taken that Moon Knight spot I don't have ratings for the show just yet but I definitely do think this is top three Marvel Disney Plus TV shows might even end up being better than WandaVision after I kind of think about it and sit on it more but I just think that Miss Marvel takes everything that the Marvel Disney Plus TV shows did and it just elevates it. It elevates the story. It elevates our side characters. It elevates even just our main character. And it really just goes anti-MCU formula, especially on Disney Plus, with the storytelling. It's Yes, it's in the introduction of the character, but even Moon Knight had that. I think Moon Knight tried to be more of a mind fuckery type of thing, so they couldn't really give us a good introduction to Moon Knight. They kind of wanted to reveal stuff as went on. But here, the biggest thing that they revealed towards the end is that Kamala is genetically modified she's just a mutant so that's something that's revealed but they also they do give her a suit in the finale which kind of does suck i mean the suit's fire it does suck that they wait until the end they always use it as a story point that's my big issue with marvel shows but with that's besides the point because the way that they tell this story, she gets her powers by the end of the first episode. And the reason she doesn't have her powers in the first episode is so that we can get to know her community. Like I said, episode one really focuses on that. Episode two, we get to learn more of her powers. Though it's my least favorite episode, it's literally essential to her character. And, and through that episode, they give us so much of her character. Episode three is the wedding. This is where we get to see her powers first, fully impact her family, put the ones she loves in danger. Episode four, she travels around the world. A lot of people didn't like this. They thought it was globe trotting and it was just too big for what Miss Marvel is. I think it works here because it allows for her to get attached to more people. It allows for, honestly, in my, in my opinion, more diverse storytelling rather than what we've had in all these other Marvel Disney Plus TV shows. I think another comparison you can make is like Hawkeye. I think that Hawkeye gets too small. I think it doesn't get as grand as it needs, especially with building up Kingpin until the finale. Also, they didn't build up a mystery villain. I mean, they kind of did with the DoD, but we knew they were going to be there. Of course, the DoD is only the threat in the final episode, but we also have episodes three, four, five. They all build up to Kamran's mom, which I'm forgetting her name again, but sorry about that. They all build up to Kamran's mom, and she gets eliminated as a threat in the fifth episode. And then the sixth episode, they culminate everything. Kamran's mom isn't going to come back to New Jersey. So story-wise, it makes sense that the DoD is there, and it also makes sense for all of our side characters. My biggest issue after episode five last week's episode was that i didn't know how they were going to culminate all of our side characters because i got so invested in them within the first three episodes and then after episode three four five we didn't really get to see them again we didn't get to touch on their stories again but the finale does a smart thing takes it back to new jersey rather than being around the globe and it brings us back to where this show started it brings us back to the characters it started with it brings us back to the core story of kamala becoming a superhero and i think it works so well and maybe again 
Maybe I'm just so happy because it's deviated from this formula that I'm so tired of, especially with the shows. But I do think that Miss Marvel takes a huge leap forward with the MCU shows. I think people are just writing this show off because it's a kids show. And I'll talk more about this later in this video. But I also wasn't necessarily that hype for Miss Marvel. I was excited because it was a Pakistani character coming onto the screen. Always excited to see representation of all sorts in Marvel. And they delivered, they delivered on the cultural aspects as well. All of our side characters, fleshed out this this important community to the story it wasn't just there to like elevate kamala it actually elevated the entire show it it's honestly the first marvel disney plus tv show where the side characters are actually very interesting not is not only just the villains but also are just her family members her friends characters that we see at the mosque you root and cheer for all of them and no other marvel disney plus tv show has done that honestly the more i think about it i think this is probably better than wandavision just because of how it actually delivers on cliffhangers that it also leaves off for us. And like I said before, I do have issues with the tone of this show. The first two episodes really do feel like a Disney original TV show with the high school stuff. And then episodes three, four, five really deviate into this big world globe trotting, honestly trauma experiencing show. And then episode six has this weird job of bringing it back to episodes one and two, giving us these more childish and honestly just not as mature moments. And, and then you also have to balance the episode five Five stuff where we literally talk about the partition and so it's a weird balance that the finale has to come through and I definitely think that the difference between the high school stuff and the globe charting stuff it really does end up clashing here in the finale this also gives me a chance to talk about my biggest issue with the people writing off this show as being just a Disney original show I definitely think the first two episodes give that tone off but as you keep going episodes four five and especially episode five really they do dive into the nitty-gritty the traumatic moments the honestly not based basic superhero things that, that all the other Marvel Disney Plus shows have done, they really deviate away from it just being a classic superhero show. Shows like Falcon Winter Soldier, Hawkeye, even WandaVision at times, even Moon Knight, they all have this basic superhero story that they end up going down the path of, and that's what kind of leads us to mediocre finales in my opinion. But this show does a thing where it starts off as a basic superhero story, a basic origin story for just a teenager that becomes a superhero. It's definitely more of a coming of age thing in the first two episodes. And yes, that still goes through the episodes three, four, five, six, but I definitely feel like as we get down the road, more of the globe trotting, emotional, traumatic experiences that people through the partition and to live through, you really get more serious about this show. And that's why I'm more frustrated with the finale the more I think about it, because it definitely feels like they had a lot of traumatic things. They had a lot of deep and serious things but again they had to balance it with what this show started with which was honestly a lot more childish aspects story-wise i think that episode six the finale did end up fixing and remedying a lot of issues that were in other season finales so all the other marvel disney plus tv shows but i do think tonally it's weird but i think that's just the show's problem as a whole and the final thing i want to talk about is miss marvel's future in the mcu there isn't much to say here because of course at the very end of the season finale they do say miss marvel will return in the marvels also the post credit scene is Kamala basically transforming into Carol Danvers, which I thought was really cool and interesting. But we do have to talk about the ending of the episode where they do, where Bruno does say that she has genetically modified genes. She's a mutant, basically. They they just dropped the word mutant. And in the credits, they actually play, they actually showed that they played the X-Men 97 theme while the, he was saying the mutant word. But I think this show on the lowest of levels does set up the X-Men really well, or just general mutant stuff well, because look at the comparisons between Kamala Kamran and Kamala. Kamala is the side of the mutants that's good. Kamran could be also viewed as a villain when it comes, or a bad person when it comes to the mutants. And so I like how they already set that up. Coincidentally, the next Marvel Disney Plus TV show is She-Hulk, which comes out late next month, I think. And that does deal with the politics and the law when it comes to superheroes. So I don't know how they're going to implement that, but I don't think it's a coincidence that they're, those are releasing right next to each other. And nevertheless, I'm just excited to see where mutants go from here. I like the stuff they set up here. I like how everything is playing out with the mutants and do i think this marvel is gonna get a season two i hope so this is the best marvel disney plus tv show i could see her getting a season two after the marvels i would love to see her just stay on disney plus i mean i'm excited for her for the marvels don't get me wrong but i definitely do think that she would work best in a six episode format unlike all these other heroes moon knight i want to see in a movie hawkeye or kate bishop i want to see in a movie even wanda was better in multiverse of madness than she was in wandavision in my personal opinion but i do think miss marvel is one of those special cases where i think her story the community building and the emotions are 
are better suited for Disney Plus than on the big screen. But we'll see after the Marvels because I am genuinely so excited for that movie now. But guys, those are all my thoughts on this season of Miss Marvel. Let me know you thought of this entire season in the comments down below. Let me know your favorite episodes, thoughts, characters, anything you loved or hated from the show. Let me know in the comments down below. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace.